Hello friends, I'm Dr. Mukmohit Singh and welcome back to my channel. Today, 1st of August, we are going to talk on a very frequently asked doubt that is about TB diagnostics. So January 2020, the RNTCP name had been changed to National Tuberculosis Elimination Program alongside a couple of changes had taken place. The document is available on my website that is www.psmsimplified.com. It has also been incorporated in the videos in the MaroPG app. I'm going to talk on a very uh, frequently asked doubt that what do we do first? Do we do a sputum microscopy or do we do CBNAT or do we do x-rays? So please remember that in a clinical setting, the presumptive pulmonary TB patients or the cases are usually identified with chest symptoms. Some of these symptoms, uh, some of these patients may also come directly into our OPD with chest X-ray. But the first thing the program tells us is to do a sputum smear microscopy. This smear microscopy can be a Zeal Nelson staining or can be a fluorescent microscopy. But all said and done, the sputum micros smear microscopy is the first step. Two specimens are collected, spot early morning and supervised spot, uh, spot specimen are collected. And they, are, they should be at least one hour apart and smear is made from both the samples. So any one of them, if it is positive, the patient is diagnosed as a microbiologically confirmed pulmonary TB case. Now in case the smears are negative, the patient is already having a chest x-ray, we refer that patient to CBNAT laboratory only if the X-ray is suggestive of TB changes. If the smears are negative and the patient does not have a chest X-ray, we ask for a chest X-ray to be done. In case the X-ray is suggestive of TB, again refer the patient to CBNAT. Now in case the CBNAT, in the CBNAT again two sputum samples are collected and sent to the CBNAT site. One specimen is using uh, is tested using the CBNAT and if TB is detected, the other sample is also used for further cascade testing. So if CBNAT result is mycobacterium tuberculosis detected, the second sample needs to be transported to the culture and drug sensitivity lab immediately if the first sample is CBNAT TB detected. If the CBNAT suggests rifampicin sensitive, the second sample is sent to first line LPA to look for isoniazid resistance or any other polydrug resistance. In case there is isoniazid resistance or in case there is other drug resistance, they are managed accordingly according to the DRTB drug resistant TB guidelines. However, if the patient is rifampicin sensitive, and isoniazid also sensitive and there is no other drug uh, resistance found. In those cases, we follow the DSTB that is drug sensitive TB guidelines. In case the mycobacterium is not detected by the CBNAT or the CBNAT is not available and the clinician does not consider TB as the probable diagnosis at this particular stage, the patient is given a clean chit and taken as a no TB case that is no TB and needs to be evaluated for other respiratory diseases. So the first thing is that sputum microscopy. The algorithm that I have shown in the videos, there is no particular order that you do this, then you do this. If it's a tertiary care center and if the patient is having symptoms, we can directly do any of the test in any of the order. But for diagnosis of pulmonary tuberculosis, the sputum microscopy is the most essential test. It is the most sensitive and the specific test for diagnosis of pulmonary tuberculosis. Thank you so much.